Now in its third year, it's a yank on the footy with Craig Wessels talking about the greatest game on the face of the earth. Sit back and enjoy, everybody. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 197 of A Yank on the Footy. I'm Craig Wessels, coming from Sandusky, Ohio, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, in this episode, we conclude my recent discussion with Barry Cheatley, the former marketing manager of the North Melbourne Kangaroos, who helped to revolutionize fundraising in the game of footy. If you haven't listened to episode 196, you're going to want to go back and listen to that one first. Because we left that one with a cliffhanger. We're going to pick up the cliffhanger here at the start of episode 197. Now, it's not really a cliffhanger. It's just, it was just a very convenient spot to go ahead and uh, split the episode into two parts. Now, folks, again, don't forget that if you're wanting to get your local footy club getting a shout-out, shoot me a note uh, at e by an email, uh, yankonthefooty at gmail.com or at yank underscore on, on Twitter, a yank on the footy podcast, or over on Instagram as well. Uh, let me know because I love being able to give shout outs to local clubs. And uh, if you would be uh, somebody who would be a wonderful guest on the podcast as well, drop me your name uh, in an email or sign up on the register as a guest form over on my website, yankonthefooty.com. Hopefully, you'll also consider uh, getting on the email list there. And if you've been enjoying the podcast, would love it if you could take a couple of moments and leave a review for the show. Really helps to generate uh, new interest. Um, and I can't thank you enough if you have done that or if you're considering doing that. I hope you will do so. One other thing before we dive back in. Uh, if you've not had a chance to listen to episode 186, I do hope you'll go back and give that a listen. Uh, we're doing a little project uh, for my mom who's going to be turning 80 here very soon. And uh, we're trying to get uh, folks, as many people from around the world, uh, to send her birthday cards uh, that uh, have some sort of a little image, whether it's a photograph or a postcard or a little anecdote about something that brings them joy. And this is going to be her 80th birthday uh, coming up here in just a couple of months. So if you want to help out with that, the mailing address is in the show notes. Uh, it's care of me at my home address. And you can find that in the show notes. Again, I do hope you'll uh, consider helping out with that if you would like to do so. So let's go ahead and dive right into my... Uh, discussion with Barry Cheatley, and this is part two of that. Enjoy. Would you personally remember the very, very first time you met your first wife? Would you remember you, you where you were? A, you have put me in a really bad position because okay. I, uh, I've been married twice, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, so... Uh, the first one, I, I remember where I met both of them. I'd like to, okay. forget, I'd like to forget where I met the first one. Uh, 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 but uh, <laughs> quite frankly, um, you know, that's, uh, that, yeah. that, that, that's one where I had somebody, you know, had I been familiar with the game of cricket, I would have, I, I wish somebody would have just, you know, hit me in the back of the head with the cricket. Oh, okay. Let's do that instead. Uh, um, but no, actually my, my first wife and I, we actually met online on the computer, oh, okay. you know, is she, we lived hundreds of miles apart at the time, actually. Yeah. And that was, you know, that was over several years, you know, of, of you know, so that's something yeah. I've never said on the podcast before. So now I'm going to get, a, I'm going to get a lot of interesting feedback on that. Okay, Well, well, yeah. well that can happen. Of course, that happened because, because back in my earlier days, there was no such thing as being online. Right. We didn't have right. any computers. Really. In fact, right. I just, I just, I won't use it, but I just was going through some of the things I keep, um, usually of a humorous nature and, and, uh, and, and there's an article, well, not an article, a whole series of stuff, but where they were talking to grandpa and, and grandpa was mentioning back when he, in his earlier days, when he was talking back, you know, maybe 60, 70 years ago. And he was saying all the things that we didn't have, that he didn't have as when he was younger, that are available today. And it's outstanding. One of these days I'll send it across to you. I'll get, I'll get it copied and, and, and send it to you okay. because it'd be interesting on you. And, and I would say, that all the things on it would be applicable, or as you Americans say, applicable um, <laughs> to anyone in America, because you know there was just so many things that we've forgotten about that were oh, yeah. that were not even in. When I say they weren't invented, they weren't used, 
compared to today. And one right, of the right. things you just mentioned is the online bit. I mean, uh, I suppose people would have met online back then had they had the facilities, the yeah. the 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 the, the uh, uh, whatever it is we're the talking techn- about, the technology uh, for it. Yeah, the te- that's all, that's the word I'm thinking. About, the technology uh, uh, to do so. So yes, there are a tremendous number of people who met online. Uh, probably one of the more so in the country towns, I think, uh, than the city. But uh, yeah, a lot of people will say they met at a at a, at a bar, you know, at a, uh-huh, at a hotel, right, right. uh, etc. True, could be a sporting event. There's a whole range, but uh, yeah, but dances were very uh, popular, of course, where you went, and uh, you know, and I don't know what happened in America in those days, but uh, but uh, in our particular Saturday night dances in the country towns, you'd go along usually on the Saturday night, and the ladies would be on one side of the hall, yep. and yep. the men on the other, and the music would. Start start with we'll shorten the whole thing down and the music would start and they introduce what sort of dance it was etc take your partners and so you go across and my mum taught me uh, to go across and if you saw a lady that was that was attracted to you you'd go across and you were taught to, i was taught to say may i have this dance may i have the pleasure of this dance now some people would go across and say are you would you <laughs> but I mean, you did it properly so then you would have a dance and uh, and then you, you'd read and, and the lady you generally speaking would return to that the spot where she was on that side of the hall, so to the band. But then, in most cases, uh, that they they might have met that as under the, and then uh, right, and married, right. etc., or gone out somewhere else. Or, complete sense. Know, and then, yep. and of course, the next question was, well, may I have another dance later? And oh, yes, yeah, so that would trigger some. And then, of course, the inevitable question would ask, and I'm not. I'm not uh, saying anything that would be not new to your listeners. And then you would say, um, or may I take you home? Or well, mate, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah. oh, yeah, it was a yes or no. Some would say, "Thank you, just thank you very much." The um, but no, I've already been uh, catered for, or alternatively, uh, you know, a nice no. Oh well, worth asking, etc. But in many cases, uh, they did. Uh, you know, yes, by all means. And I of course, think that I, was the whole idea. Of it. Yeah. I think that my, you know, my my mom will be eighty a little bit later on this year. Okay. Um, well, but she'll I, remember I, those I, things. Yeah, I I think I think you know here. They referred to that as going to the sub to watch the submarine races. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, so I yeah, I, well, I, I, I wanted to get to a couple things uh, with go. regards to like promotions and such. And I did, and I don't know if you've ever heard of these or not. You know, having been in the position that you were in, are you familiar yep. with? Are you familiar with the name Bill Beck? Bill Beck. B C K. V E E V like V is in Victor. V E E C K. He 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 was a he owned uh, uh, he owned the Cleveland Indians for uh, for one for yeah, a period no, of time and then no, he owned the that, Chicago White Sox. But he was no, he was a name. he was a he did a lot of promotions and gimmicky things and and it's just you know because you you know, you know your your daughter had mentioned the the disco nights at at Arden Street but he yes. done, he did something back in 1979 called the, and I'm going to send you a clip to this. Uh, called yeah. disco disco demolition night where they basically they gave people um like cheap tickets to come to the baseball game yeah. if they brought a disco record that they were going to play two games that day so you know in between the two games they're going to put together yeah. put all these disco records into a big bin and blow right. them up in in center field of the of the field and it turned out to be this big riot during the course of the game oh. in the second game never got played and then the oh. yeah, and the team that I that I have supported the Cleveland Indians back in 1974, and I remember this. I was 11 at the time. Uh, they had they had a 10 cent beer night, so they they basically sold. They were selling beers to the fans for 10 cents a piece. What could go wrong with that? Uh, well, they darn near destroyed the stadium. Uh, <laughs> quite frankly. Oh. So, um, you know, you're Simone mentioned that you, you also were you know hosting players at your home yeah that yeah. was yeah that's, that's a, what she's been she's been very thorough um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, that, that wasn't a that was never of a fundraiser there's so many things that we right we right do, but that's something that all, you, all that's, based on all based on 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 on, uh, on um well i suppose it was uh, the principal involved would have been uh, uh, uh creating and 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 and, and continuing to have um, a happy ship mm-hmm. um, and there's a there's a little saying goes with the two so yes we lived um, not today but we lived um, for 35 years in a lovely old home which was uh, a stone's throw so to speak from uh, uh, a ground where Essendon are very much in the news nowadays 
played. CR. Uh, they may even be returning there. It's called Windy Hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we played there as an away team, a visiting team, uh, yes, we would invite, uh, um, we had a rather large backyard and I had a barbecue designed large enough to be able to cater for them. So not only did we invite the players back, but their partners, wives, uh, all our honorary staff, uh, our committee, board members, et cetera, et cetera. So there'd be probably 150 people uh, wow. come back. and and um, But it was all part of um, running a happy ship and, and getting mm -hmm. to people. And people still want to say that we didn't do it for that reason, but but uh, some of the people, well, not some, all, all of the people that played when I was there, some of whom uh, we still keep in close contact with. We go interstate to either Adelaide or to Perth, for example. We, we, we generally speaking, stay with them. Okay. Because we got to know we had some players uh, actually live with us uh, uh, for a well, well one couple uh, in this particular case before their home was built and we still retain that friendship and uh, uh, yeah it was all uh, there are two very uh, I think it's worth mentioning that I, I often talk about them and this one uh, I wish I wish our, our government over here and other organisations too. And I, 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 I gained it from my time with the American Insurance Company. And I, must, I think it was Napoleon Hill, a guy called Napoleon Hill. He came home with it. And it's called Craig, uh, the Mastermind Alliance. And when you say that to people, they say, oh, you know, I was talking to this black chick the other day and he talked about it. But when he explained, you know, he's talking about this Mastermind Alliance, this highfalutin terminology, two words. But when he explained in one sentence what it was, he said, gee, we all understood what he meant, and this is not my saying, it's uh, based on a particular fellow, Napoleon Hill, who, who was encouraged by the late and great Andrew Carnegie, that's your man, mm -hmm. at the turn of the last century, not this one, right. uh, who had been recognised as, as a philanthropist, as giving away 450, American, 450 million American dollars. That was in 1900, and it's recorded. So right, God right. only knows what four hundred and fifty American million dollars is today. But and he asked this fellow. He he said there was no money involved, but he asked this fellow to go and talk to many of the then successful people. Interesting, you mentioned Ford earlier. Henry Ford was one of them. Kaiser Stuhl, the Vanderbilts, etc., to see what business principles they might all apply. They, they did apply to become successful. To make a long story short, he came up with seventeen. They're not necessarily in order. But the first one being setting an objective, he calls it a definiteness of purpose. Definiteness of purpose. But the second one is master minds, and here it is in a sentence: two minds working in perfect harmony towards the attainment of a common objective. Mm -hmm. I'll repeat it: two minds working in perfect harmony towards the attainment of a common objective. Well, I wish our governments here and your government too and the objective <laughs> member wouldn't, wouldn't apply that principle because it's just so uh, true. So this was all part and partial uh, of that where uh, it's all many... That doesn't mean to say that you don't have your discussions, your, your objections, your, dis, your your arguments within four walls and but that's in the think tank, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, but then you work in perfect harmony. So it's a very, it's a great business uh, principle. I know wish so many people would, would apply that. The other one has got nothing to do with that, but the other one that I talk about a lot, and I think it'll be applicable to your, your over, anywhere. And that is, uh, is where uh, uh, every living organism grows to maturity, levels off and dies unless it is injected with new life, new blood, and new enthusiasm. I've used the expression new, because that's what you people say over there. We say new. So, and it's so true. And that's why a lot of uh, organisations do fade away, because they don't apply that same principle, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, that's why there's lots of changes and things, and there's always going to be uh, changes. But having said all that, yeah, so that was all part and partial, Craig, I suppose, and we, when I say that I still talk about, we didn't do it for that reason, but we actually, but it wasn't, a, it, it, we actually enjoyed it. And it was just, I suppose, to use another expression, it was, it was just as confirming, cementing a firmer relationship between all of us to have a happy family, uh, right. to, to be all pulling in the same direction, uh, to, to have the same objective. Uh, and that was to be successful, hopefully to win in those days a premiership. 
but to keep a happy ship. And and uh, and that's that is the role today of the senior people, the head man, the number one up the top. Surely that that together with a lot of help and assistance, surely uh, the board of direct, that's their job to run a very to be successful. You have to have run a happy ship. I, I completely agree. I've, I've been a school teacher for now for 29 years. So I, I, yeah. there's a lot of parallels with that, with what you're saying there in terms of the success with students as well. Now, yes. I, I wanted to get into a little bit of the, the present day with, with the ruse here before we wrap up. I've got a, a few okay. more questions Thanks. for you. Um, they're looking for, they're looking for a coach. Uh, it, yes. Do you believe that Alistair Clarkson is going to end up in the blue and white? Well, it's a very, very good question since it's Wednesday across here now and the date is um, just so that we're uh, to the date here. It's, it's, uh, it's around about 11 a.m. Uh, mm -hmm. here on, uh, on Wednesday, the 17th, 17th of August. Yes. And I believe that um, my club uh, announced in the paper or send the paper, and they're usually pretty right, the scribes, the journalists, uh, that my club, North Melbourne, have, have asked uh, Alistair well, through his manager who's a lovely, terrific bloke, I know him um, to make a decision today uh, it, will he accept uh, the offer that uh, my club has made to him uh, which is for five years and etc etc uh, so they'd like to know today because coming into the seed I think it's been declared that he's decided not to go and coach um, the Greater Western Sydney uh, mm -hmm. but uh, now he's uh, perhaps has been interviewed and talked to uh, to Essendon, who uh, uh, the club I've just referred to earlier, um, uh, where uh, things are very, a lot of things have happened there. So I, I got a feeling that today uh, it will be. I've got no idea. In answer to your question, by the way, I don't know okay. uh, for at all. And so, but I think today, uh, hopefully, uh, today a decision will be made by he, he and or his management to say what he is doing. So I guess the answer will be, yes, I'll be coaching Essendon, uh, yes, I'll be, and or, yes, I'll be coaching North Melbourne, or I haven't made up my mind, mm -hmm. uh, so I'm leaving it open. It'll have to be one of the, the, the three things. As you know, Alistair himself um, played with us, uh, then he did go and play with uh, Hawthorne. He's been very successful, and one of the reasons for that is that I can remember many years ago, he, he took himself at his own cost, and generally, not necessarily only to America, but he went and spent time by appointment with a lot of uh, leading coaches and other people in all different sports. I mm -hmm. must say it was mainly the NFL, but he went to learn the principles involved in all of that, you know, knowing full well that that was a path which he may consider to take uh, later on. And, uh, and uh, he's a very astute uh, person, but he was prepared to go and, and uh, do the old look, listen and learn the three L's. They go and look, listen to the people. Um, I don't know who he got to talk to over the time, but I do know for a fact that that's what he was doing. Um, just to increase his own knowledge in many, many areas. And he went to other countries too and uh, spent some time with the then successful people, just like uh, uh, Mr. Carnegie asked this Napoleon Hill to go and talk to the successful business person, persons. And it was just interesting um, you know how he's so it isn't it isn't coincidental that he's just happened to have blah 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 done this and done that he spent a lot of uh, time so um, yes I'm not uh, I keep an open mind on the whole okay. thing and my, well, my short answer to it is that um, I leave, we leave people like myself leave that that decision to the, the the current custodians of our club our chairman who president who's a lady and uh, a very switched on person and a, a general manager uh, CEO, uh, Chief Executive Officer, uh, to leave it to them. Um, I think they've they've done their due di diligence and uh, homework on uh, discovering who was available. So hopefully we'll know that decision, Craig, right, right. today. Soon. Today, well, yeah, and it's uh, and you know, and, and I I saw footage of, uh, and I don't remember what year it was. It was during one of the grand finals, you know, and it was, you know, a shot of, of him up in the in the coach's box and. Right. There, you know, he's there as a senior coach and he's he's flanked on one side by Chris Fagan and the other side by Damian Hardwick, who were yes. both coaching, you know, as his yes. assistants at that time. So he has, you know, he has got one heck of a coaching tree, if you will, oh, yeah. from where other, yeah. you know, other coaches are, are growing from. So, you know, you know, I and I and I, I yeah. hate to bring this up because I, I, I'm 
sure it's going to be a, a sore subject with you, but you know, there, there's talk about the 19th license with the team in Tasmania and, you know, yeah. Tasmania says they want their own team. And, and then you hear people in the, in the media there who are saying, well, maybe we should just move an existing club there. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the one that gets brought up is one that is near and dear to you. Yeah. It's, well, uh, you've, 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 done, you've done a lot of home. Uh, I commend you for uh, doing a lot of research and, uh, and get becoming knowledgeable in our situation. I, I love uh, your it, I love your game. Yeah, well, I, in many things that you've done, you've done some uh, good research. Yeah, um, yeah, um, yes. The uh, I was only reminded by reading the article in the last couple of days in our uh, in our papers here in the state in Melbourne, uh, the number of uh, uh, coach current current coaches, as opposed to a couple of former coaches who have worked with Alistair. Uh, in that uh, in that area, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned a couple, and uh, there's there's a goodly number of them. So therefore, it isn't coincidental that he he's got to know and he's been very successful and uh, becomes highly recommended and is well well thought of uh, in the coaching area. In relation to the 19th team, um, people like myself, um, I think they'd all agree. We believe, whilst it's small in uh, population. And in size, um, the number of players over a great period of time that originally were born and bred uh, from Tasmania, there's just so many of them. Right, uh, right. Admittedly over a period of time, but pro rata of their population, um, uh, people like myself believe that they should have a team. No, not one that's relocated. If it means an odd number, a 19th team, that can be overcome. And I personally trust, hope that the that the, all the other little, not obstacles, but the uh, will, will be overcome in a positive way and that Tasmania will have in the near future their own uh, uh, team. And yeah. that would, I, I say that because, um, and with the, the full support, hopefully, of the Australian Football League, after all, uh, the Swans probably isn't, a, the Sydney Swans isn't a good example because they did, they were South Melbourne, they South went Melbourne, there yeah. as with Fitzroy with the Brisbane Lions. But the introduction of the Gold Coast uh, Suns and the Greater Westy, the Greater Western Sydney side uh, in there, in two states, which is predominantly what we uh, refer to as rugby, rugby league state, and yeah. rugby union for obvious reasons. So, but that's been uh, terrific, and uh, I, I think most people, certainly those of my era, would be would be very hopeful that Tasmania, and yes, like anything else, it's going to take a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, to build and we're rebuilding at the moment and other teams are doing the same thing so and with the help of you know as they have done with um, with the greater western sydney and the gold coast where they have what they call drafting concessions and the league right, rate decisions right. where where they have first right of something to get started and uh, and and anyone that doesn't go any other clubs uh, that don't go along with that well they should be thankful uh, for what it, and it's all it goes back Hopefully, when decisions are made by common, mostly common sense, obviously, when decisions are made like that, uh, you know, the old two binds working in perfect harmony, uh, decisions made, well, once it's made, get with it, be positive, because looking to the future, um, that's the way it's going to be. Okay, I've got a couple more things before we wrap yeah. up here. Um, Go on. Yeah, with your, with your background in marketing and promoting yeah. the ruse, uh, and I'd love to ask this question of, of, of people in Australia. You know, we have a, a, a small but growing um, group of fans here in the U.S. I mean, there, we have what's known as the USAFL, which has been around for 25 years. There's over, there's over 50 teams playing in that league here in the United States. Is there um, really? There really is. Yeah. Yeah. There's, oh. They're all, you know, they're all playing for free. It's all, it's all like club team stuff, but it's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, but you know, you know, we have a population of 330 million people here in the U.S. Yes. If yes. if we could figure out a way to get even one percent of that population, yeah, yeah. interested yeah. in footy and following the game, that's 10 percent of yeah. Australia's population. Yeah, you know, and think about the revenue that could come in from that. I mean, what could yeah. you know? What you know, think about you know the, the you know you see NBA jerseys, you see NFL jerseys. I'm sure when you're out and about, you know, in your community, you've got young people that are wearing, you know, LeBron James jerseys or Michael Jordan, you know, yeah. um, jerseys or whatever the case may be. What what can we do 
here? What could the AFL do here to, to, to help to harness this excitement or to try to encourage, you know, more excitement? Because we get three or four games a week on like our regular cable television here. Now I have the, the watch AFL app and a lot of us do that. We get, you know, we get all of the, the games and all of the stuff from Fox footy. So I can watch the games live or I can watch them on demand. Um, but how do we get yep. people excited here? Well, that's a very, gee, it's a very good question. To, and to answer it when I say on the spot, um, I would, uh, my immediate, uh, uh, what's my reaction, my immediate thought would be that uh, whether it's uh, some people from here going to America or vice versa, uh, my, my, my suggestion would be um, to uh, have a get together um, in either place. Personally, I think it's, I mean, uh, uh, online and or what you and I are doing today, that's fine. But, uh, you know, do a bit of, do a lot of homework. And, uh, and in this particular case, whether it's one way or the other, uh, is where uh, the people are knowledgeable enough, particularly from your side. I think you know a fair bit about what happens here. Uh, see, that surprises. Uh, but I did know that there was Australian rules played in America, but not to the extent of you just said and uh, or just stated uh, and etc. So uh, I haven't I haven't got the answer other than to say that uh, as a result thereof, uh, someone uh, heading up that right person in America making contact with uh, in this particular case the right person that the current is a guy called Gilbert Rockle, uh, the Australian Football League here based in in, in Melbourne uh, to to lay the cards on the table and, and, and put a well-presented, just an open-minded case saying, hey, this is what we've got currently. Mm -hmm. What can we do over here? This is from your side. What can we do over here to enhance that, to have more involvement, et cetera, et cetera, and, uh, and, have, and have those <laughs> two, two or minds working together in perfect harmony towards the attainment of that common objective. The common right, objective right. being, in this case, is to is to increase the number of, uh, of uh, teams, um, uh, nothing to do with the financing of, of same, but, but to assist in any way, shape or manner that they can to, to increase the, those number of teams based on your, your huge population. Because in the end, it's a sport. Um, uh, it's, it's people in participation, uh, participating in a great game of, of, of football. Yes, it's different to the, uh, the gridiron. We all uh, know that. But the fact that you've already got a base on which to start that uh, foundation, uh, that's just fantastic. In fact, if you send me some stuff in due course and et cetera, et cetera, you know, I'll give, I'll give, when I say I, together, what I would then do, I go and talk to some other uh, people like myself that are a bit, a bit forward thinking. I, I won't name them now, but there's people where I'd say, well, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is what they've got. How would you go about it? Because you, you, the old three L's, you look, listen, and, and learn. Learned, so, yes. gee, I think that's fantastic. And if it's already there, uh, surely there would be some learned people here in football that would have better suggestions that I could come up with at my, mm -hmm. uh, to do what we, you and I are talking about. Uh, so why not discuss it? Yeah, it's, and it's interesting because you mentioned that uh, actually the, the state of Tasmania is actually yep. is actually helping to sponsor the USAFL right now. They've actually provided some funding for it. Is so that it's, right? Yeah, it's it's uh, mm -hmm. it's been pretty it's been pretty interesting. Yep. Now, I have I have a couple little trivia questions about your career that I want to ask you. And then okay. a couple, couple closing questions here that are going to. Okay. That I okay. Think, okay. So during your playing career, which team did you win the most games against? Oh, gee. <laughs> That's a very good. I've never been asked that question you, before. You, you, so I'll have to do beat, a little bit of homework. You beat them, you beat them five times. Me. You beat them five times and you lost to them twice. I think I think uh, that's not necessary, but I do know. I think we had a pretty good. Strangely, it wasn't. It's unusual, but I think we had a pretty good record. Or I did. It's not me personally contributing, but it was against Collingwood. But I'm not sure the answer to that. But I'll have to do it, my it uh, homework on it. Was, it was Fitzroy. Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, no, yeah, that's okay. I, yeah, so I, I, I'm not getting confused, but I know uh, uh, to win a game at what was called then. Uh, I'll think of it. Uh, against Collingwood at their ground then, mm -hmm. um, 
because it was so uh, – we used to love playing against Collingwood either at their grounds and or ground at, or at ours because you were, in, you were guaranteed a, a huge crowd, larger than any other team that we played. And, and players love play, – as you would readily agree, no matter what sport it is, gee, any sport, love playing in front of good – attendances, good crowds. So, okay. yes, Fitzroy, because, yes, well, that's an interesting uh, aspect. So I was wrong there, but I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. So, uh, oh. yeah, so that was – okay, that's Fitzroy. You're gone. Do you know which team that you never got a win against? You 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 played them six times and did not get a win any of the six oh. times that you played them. Gee, that's – gee, you've done some homework. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a return for six – um, well, uh, in Footscray, I know. Captain the team, uh, the, da, 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 we never beat them. I'd have to probably, oh, yeah. uh, no, I played in a winning team myself against Geelong, so I skipped Geelong. Uh, that's a very, it's a very, Hawthorne, I it's a very, I'm just trying to think of, of, of I'm more thinking of the ground. So, if it's very interesting, da 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 um, did I play against Richmond? No, I'll have to pass on that one because okay. I'd be guessing. Okay, it, it was Melbourne. Yeah, well, I, I, gee, I never played in the winning. Yeah, now that you mentioned it, yeah, I cannot remember. I, <laughs> I can, sorry, I'm, I'm unable to remember <coughs> um, Melbourne. That's okay. Well, I'll certainly be doing, uh, doing my homework because I am, whilst I have got my own records of, you know, uh, well, the records that are available today, of course, because of the computerization and I right, get right. to talk. Any time that you've got, for example, and um, just just email me, and I'll give you give you his details. But any time that you wanted um, uh, uh, information statistically on anything to do pertaining to the Australian rules football, and you may already know this, but his name is Cole Hutchinson, and he is uh, uh, a great Geelong man. You follow him, and he's not only the club historian for Geelong and. I think he's missed one, and I'm talking about away games too, wow. uh, interstate. I think he's missed one game in the last 50 years. Wow. Something like one, one, and I think he was sick or whatever the story was. And he's a walking, and he's got all the details. But he's also not full time nowadays, but he also happens to be the AFL, the Australian Football League's official statistician. Okay. He's the official. So it wouldn't matter, you know, if, and, and of course, nowadays with him feeding. And he comes up with so many different uh, things, uh, even off the top of his head without looking at his computer. So anytime you had something that was very that you would like to know, uh -huh. and or was a difficult information uh, to, to uh, answer to get hold of, um, uh, let me know because I'll give you his details. I'll mention it to him, okay, um, and your name, and uh, and he'll sort of know. But a very very cooperative uh, person. He'd, he'd be uh, a he'd be a terrific guest on the podcast too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In yeah. fact, if you gave him, and he's actually, I'm trying to, when I say I and others, and he's, he has put some things together, because I think before too much longer, he should he should write a book in conjunction with so he could do it himself, but write a book and, 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 and come up with, oh, it'd just be so interesting, but then it would be his top 10 or 20 uh, unusual statistics, or, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's things that... Um, it's so much use uh, uh, talking about who's played our greatest number of games or alternatively who's equal as number of premierships. No, no, that's all part of the course. Or how many, uh, which, which clubs have had the more Brownlow, uh, Brownlow medalists? You know? No, but uh, he, God, he comes up with, uh, he's just an interesting uh, guy and uh, he just loves what he does and he happens to be a, uh, uh, a great, he lives in, in Geelong mm -hmm. and uh, I think always has. And I get to talk to him uh, uh, so often because I'm, I'm often asking him, for, and he's about to provide uh, me with some updated information, which I'll use in, not use, but I'll have available for my little. Uh, for example, um, it's an unusual one, but of the 13, approximate 13,000 people, men, that have played VFL, AFL football since 18, the season, our first season was 1897. We weren't in it, but 1897, your team was, Geelong, uh, in Melbourne, was 13,000, 9% of whom only played one game. Wow. 9% of the 13,000, there's a reason for it, played one game, and another approximate 9% played two. 
Now, the club record hold happens to be Brett Harvey, our North Melbourne player, with 400 and something games. So mm-hmm. you cannot do, you can do a percentage, but it that many, uh, it would have that many O's in front of it, orts, whatever you call orts, uh, it'd be foreign. But even, for example, it's still today that uh, there's still less than 100 of those, 100 out of 13,000 that have played 300 games or more. So it makes it, uh, whether it's the one club or other clubs. Right, so right. it makes it very special, the number of games uh, played. For example, I'm not putting you on the spot, but uh, is there such a thing as uh, is, a, is a player that's played the most NFL games, whether he's with uh, he transferred from the uh, from, um, from San Francisco, Oakland Road to, to... Is there someone that stands up having played the most NFL games? I think, it's, I think it might be... Uh... It might be somebody by the name of Morton Morton Anderson, who was a oh, okay. he, he was he was a kicker, interestingly okay. enough. And I I know oh. he kicked a lot for New Orleans because the, the kickers oh. have last they tend to last a lot longer. Um, yes, well, because they, they're not on the field. They're not on yeah, the field. You know, all Tom, the Tom Brady is what 45, 46 years old yeah. now. He's still playing at a very high level. Yeah. So, um, would you would you differentiate? I, I know that the. The answer is, well, did he play? Yes, he's on the team. But would you differentiate between, say, a kicker uh, who is on and off the field uh, b- very much so, as opposed to a Brady who's on the field when they're playing either offensive or deep, whatever the story is? Would you, know, you differentiate people, there? I probably would not, simply because of you know, the, the, the simple fact that they had to, they still had to be very successful at what they were doing because there was always okay. going to be somebody who was younger that might be able to come and take their job from them. Um, well, it's a very good point you make. Uh, yeah. So they're in the team. Uh, I just found my little note as I write little things down, but there's no, <laughs> you're like, you probably heard it before. There is no I in the letter alphabet in team, T E A M, but there is a me. <laughs> yep. A- absolutely. M-E. Absolutely. So the answer to that is that, uh, well, not the answer, but yes, you, you're quite right. Uh, did uh, did that player, the kicker we're talking about, uh, did he, is he registered as, when he played a game, he went on the field, uh, not when he sat in the stands naturally, but when he went on the field, whether he got the kick or he didn't that day, uh, did he play a game? Yes, he did. Well, if he did, therefore, he's count, that's counted as a game. Now, how yeah. many did he play? Oh, he played, uh, I'm just he, saying, 450. Well, he, how many did, who's the next team? Well, it's Brady. He played four. Well, he still played the game. So, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, he he played 382 uh, games. Now, Tom Br- Tom Brady is is the highest player on the list that was not a kicker. He's played 318. Okay. And then how many games, uh, if you played every game, uh, in a se- your season, and you including finals or including playoffs, um, how many would be the maximum in any one year, or has that changed over the years? Well, like I, I honestly, I I don't believe they count the playoff games in those games, unlike oh, what, okay. what, the, what the AFL and BFL have done. Yeah, okay. so yeah, you, the the game the season now is seventeen games. It, that changed last right. year; it had been sixteen. Right. Um, well, yeah, yeah, there's a. There's, if they only count, yeah, Craig, if they only count in that record, if they only count, they don't count the playoffs. And I understand what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, they he shouldn't would, either, but he the, would have a lot more. Yes, yes, yes. But if if well, the point that you're making there is um, to play uh, a max uh, if every game, seventeen a season, that's an outstanding record to have played. What the number you just said. Right. Brady, would you say three hundred? What three fifty six? Did you say? Three, th- he's played three eighteen. Yeah, three eighteen. Well, at seventeen a season maximum, that's a bloody good effort. Absolutely, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Two two more things from you before we wrap up. Okay. 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 Uh, the first one. What is what is your proudest moment in your life? What is what is what's the thing or the event that you're most proud of? Uh, sporting wise. Does it? It does not have to be sport. It could be anything. I'm. I'm just. I'm curious. Yeah. I mean, it does yeah. not have to be sport. It could be. It could be. It doesn't have to be. Could be what? It. It could be sport. It could be. You know. It could be. You know. I. Uh, I want to give me the question. Just give yeah. me the question again. What is your proudest moment? Proudest moment. My proudest match. Again, I'm, I, I know I'm, and I'm commending you at the same time, but uh, you obviously ask others. Um, 
Uh, no, no, no. The, the questions you ask the proudest moment. Uh, uh, generally speaking, my proudest moment. Uh, it's a, it is really a, a, good, a, a good question. So now I've got to differentiate whether the, my answer will come under family or sport. So I'm going to say to, there's no doubt about my proudest moment in sport was being uh, in the off-field team, off-field team, uh, winning my clubs, our clubs, not my, our clubs, first premiership in 1975. That is by far mm -hmm. my proudest moment sporting-wise. Um, my, um, I suppose, yes, uh, my proudest uh, family moment would be uh, 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 my marriage, subsequent two children being born and subsequently thinking we weren't have one, we have an adopted granddaughter. Uh, okay. Uh, but we class her as being a granddaughter. Uh, yes, yes, my son, yes, married, my yes, son yes. who set this up and helped, he, he uh, married Lisa, who already had Ebony Bianca, and then our own uh, granddaughter, uh, very thrill, and it does change. It changes life a little bit. So her name is Charlotte Arden. Uh, I was told after Elizabeth Arden or Sue Arden, you're an American actress, but uh, the truth of the matter is, I think it's been known out to Arden Street where we play our games. Uh, well, we did play uh, our games. So. Uh, we've come under family, I think, the proudest moment. I've had some other very uh, nice <gasps> highlights, but uh, no, they okay. they would be they would okay. be my my. I, I've differentiated, I know, uh, for it all. But yes, I, I suppose uh, the, the yeah, my proudest moment was is to is to marry was to marry and uh, and and have a family because uh, everyone wants to be everyone wants to be a, a parent. Well, that's that's a, so. fan, that's a fantastic answer. That's a fantastic yeah. answer. Yeah. Now, the well, last thing, what was the other one? The last thing I wanted to ask you before yeah. we wrap up, you you yep. have been friends with uh, Dr. Eilat for sixty three years. Doc, Dr. Eilat, what, yes. Yeah. What does that friendship mean to you? Uh, yeah. What does that friendship mean to me? Well, a great deal because. Uh, 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 because although we're not related, he's become he's he's my he isn't my longest serving friend as such. Because I met I met a person when I was eight and a half years of age who I still keep in contact with at my what we call state or primary school eight and a half nineteen forty seven it was, um, and he's a little younger. But what does it mean to me? Uh, it means, um, uh, and I've pinched the line from. Um, and I think it's a song uh, by Foster, Foster and Alan, the English couple, who were a very the Irish, uh, yeah, Irish couple, Foster and Alan, their names. And, and I think the song's called My Forever Friend. Now, he's relating, of course, uh, to God in his case. He's they're not a religious thing. But uh, so I, I've given a lot of thought. And, and he, he, he is my closest friend over a period of time. And, and although, as I just said earlier, he's not related uh, and that's why the uncle and auntie and bit comes in. So to be able to have uh, uh, someone who I have complete faith in and vice versa and to have the close association as a result thereof with both families and where the children, our children still uh, communicate very much uh, with each other, um, very much so as a result of the friendship and together with Marjorie, his wife, is also a life member of our uh, football club. So I guess uh, the answer is uh, a tremendous friendship uh, with, with a person who I met through football mm -hmm. and have retained that friendship through some ups and downs. We've had our challenges. Oh, don't not on a personal note, but, uh, you know, in fact, uh, uh, the old if bit, um, if I hadn't, it'd be the same story, if I had not, joined, oh, there's no doubt about it, if I had not joined North Melbourne and, and, and meeting Alan Arlott, I wouldn't be talking to you today, Craig. Right, right. There's no doubt about yeah. that. Yeah. No well, doubt about it, because I would not have, I would not have been exposed to uh, to changing into another role and joining the American insurance company. He had some say in that, and then uh, along the line, and the, the friendship, and then uh, as a result thereof, he was the one that uh, gave me the opportunity of of being a part of the North Melbourne Football Club uh, exec uh, team, uh, off-field team, 
to raise money and therefore be uh, part of that 70s and 80s, but more so the 70s uh, success. Uh, it was just uh, tremendous. So that's why I say uh, the, the highlight uh, my, of my, uh, my career sporting-wise would be being a part of that uh, as a team yeah. to win our first premiership. Which I'm very, of which of which I'm very proud. Yeah. It sounds as though, for the the better part of a half century or more, yes. either one of you could pick up the phone and say, "Hey, I need help with this," uh, and 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 a, you you would beat the other person's house in in mere minutes. Well, it's a very good. See again, it's a very good uh, comment you just made. Somebody once asked me uh, what a friend is, and if we have. And if we have a, a, if we have a, a, say upwards of five, uh, I've heard there's some five really good for people. Oh, I've got lots and lots of friends. I say, well, hang on, you know. So here's the analogy. Uh, so for some reason, uh, the one I was told, I, I like it. So you're driving home and you you and you've and you you've had a bit over uh, alcohol. Uh, that you should have had. So they pull you over, and as a result thereof, in our case, you're over 0.05. So we, you end up uh, spending the night in, in behind some bars, et cetera, et cetera. And they uh, give you the phone, and they allow you, they allow you to make one phone call. And, you, and, and if they come along with the desired uh, bail, uh, you can get out of the place uh, because if you, yeah, no, no. So that, so it's so much. So when the person gives you that, it's not. So he said, it's not much use asking, can I have a phone book? You know, in other words, can I have uh, the, the book? Because you know the person's number. So who do you ring at 4 a.m. in the morning when you say to that friend, I'm, I'm in a certain place. Uh, you need $10,000 to get me out. Yeah. I'll leave it to you. And the bloke, it, that, that friend doesn't say, oh, turn it up, it's four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> or alternatively, where am I going to get 10? See, that's not a friend. Where am I going to get 10,000? He says, I'll be there mm -hmm. as quick as I can. Now, that, that means to say, and then he sits down. He probably wouldn't even tell him, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to help a friend. What's it for? Uh, I'll let you know later on. There oh, you go. So then he sort of says, well, and says his friend, now I, I said I'd be there and I will be. That's a true friend. So and then he says, well, you know, I can help that. I can do the, the well, you, you have a different thing by whatever you call it over there. But uh, but that's the, that's the person. He doesn't tell anybody and he's the one that you ring. So if you've got upwards of five of those sorts of people as using that as an analogy, mm -hmm. then that's the, a good definition uh, of okay. a, a, a friend, I reckon. And, okay. and, and, and it doesn't wave. It doesn't. It, it, it's it's the same because a friend a friend um, and that's why I love uh, I'm going to use the expression in due course uh, that person would be your forever friend. I absolutely I absolutely think you're right on that. That's uh, yeah. That's and you know I I think that that that's something that that today's generation and as a teacher um, I see that that becomes more and more difficult for for kids because they're you know you can't you know our we had a little bit of a glitch with the cameras here but i'm holding up my phone in front of the camera here oh, you know, the, okay. kids, the, kid, the kids the kids i haven't so been much able time. to see you since yeah i touched oh, the phone up and, right. and i lost you but right. i knew we're talking so it wasn't trust, important uh, trust me i've I did, done you a I, favor by yeah. not looking at me anyway i did not i did not get any better looking uh oh, did you have you still got me on your screen i do not uh -uh. I do oh, not. Okay. I, I have. Did you have me? Did you have me prior to that? At the at the outset, then I did. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, we. Yeah. yeah it's I. Uh, you definitely need to you know have people to look out for, and that's something that I tell at the end of each podcast. I tell you, I tell the listeners, you know, look out for each other to reach out and you know reach out to yeah. your friends, check up on them, make sure that they're okay. You know, so. Yeah. Good. 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 Good point. Yeah, uh, yeah and that's why. Yeah, I enjoy. Uh, um, I still purposely talk to some of the players that are my age, my group, uh, just to say hello to them. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I've introduced a little thing down. Um, I do it myself now, but and I, we organised our, our oldest um, uh, 50 living players. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, yeah, and, um, uh, and I arrange for some appropriate persons, people, um, to ring them, to contact them, uh, making sure they've got the number, they know each other so well on their birthday. Okay, okay. So, and I, my original idea was to have a current player uh, do it. Uh, that hasn't worked, 
because they have more things on their mind at the club at the moment than what, what I just suggested. Yeah. But I do arrange and then I sit down and I say, well, who will I get? Apart from myself, who will I get to ring? So I spend a bit of time uh, uh, thinking about who it would be. So I try and I try and once I marry the two. Uh, recently, there was one that uh, lives in and out of Ballarat, where I came from. His name's Ray Murphy, a former player, and I won't go into that whole story. But I thought, well, who will I get to call him? Well, I chose Drew Petrie, who played over three hundred games with us. He's been assistant the last few years at the uh, West Coast Eagles, and he was born and bred in Ballarat, so the right same place. So I thought, so I arranged for him to call this fellow who we'd never met before his birthday. And of course, when he said, this is Drew Petrie here, uh, Ray Murphy knew exactly who he was. He said, I believe it's your birthday today. I'm wrist ringing to say happy birthday. Well, they had a great old chat. Uh, so, you know, because it's his birthday. So yeah, it's another way of, of uh, yeah, another way of extending that friendship that that association, that rapport, that 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 uh, uh, happy family, uh, blah blah blah, a uh, bit, and reminding everybody that uh, yeah, friends are friends. Mm. There you go. There you go. Well, Barry, this has been an absolute delight, sir. I have okay. truly enjoyed speaking with you. Uh, I I hope you've had some fun. Well, I certainly have. I I hope that uh, uh, you can use this one if you like at the end of your thing. Um, it's a good one. Uh, I used to say it at the end of our fundraising nights, while well, in the program too. I, I trust, Craig, that you've enjoyed my company as much as I've enjoyed yours. I, well, I certainly have, sir. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I truly have. I, I, I love, I love being able to talk to people who, yeah, who have great stories to tell. I mean, that's one of yeah. the things that I that I love doing about the podcast. I mean, I still do that one. Yeah, you know, I do episodes where we talk about the games and that sort of thing. But I love to talk to people who love the game. And it's, it's yeah. just it's, it's something that I, I just I truly enjoy to do because I've never seen a game in person before. Well, Dave, but, uh, I, how old are you now, by I ask you, how old are you? I, I, am, I am 59. That's right. You're still teaching now. Yes. Are you, have you ever been to Australia? I was supposed to visit Australia back in 1983 when I was in the right. Navy. Uh, oh, okay. And it would have been during cricket season, unfortunately. But oh, uh, yeah. we were supposed to go to Melbourne. We were supposed to go to Sydney, to Hobart, yep. and to Perth. Mm -hmm. But okay. unfor unfortunately, I, I served on an aircraft carrier. Uh, unfortunately, the Iran Iraq War broke out at that time. Oh, so okay. Yeah. We ended up we ended up missing going to Australia. So I have not been yeah. there. It, well, Craig, I, if you ever, if you ever there. do intend, if you ever do intend coming to Australia then be sure to, and if you don't visit Melbourne but uh, or elsewhere, please let me know. That's number one. Uh, you'll be looked after. Number two is that uh, with your podcast or any other uh, area, if uh, if there's someone that you'd like to get in contact with and you don't perhaps, well, not so much know about how to go about it, but you want to say you're having difficulty, you'd like to especially contact a particular person in Australia as football. It doesn't matter who they are. I'm not saying that I would know them, uh, personally, but I'll know someone that will know them, and okay. or, uh, I'll put you onto a lead. And or, I, yes, you can contact him by uh, such and such if I can be of any assistance. Not only with that, but in any way, shape, or manner, I'd be delighted to do so. That would be fantastic. I mean, I, I have had, I've had some some former players on. I had uh, recently, I had Sean Smith uh -huh. uh, on. Uh, I've I've had um, one of my first, the first player that I interviewed on the podcast was Ricky Nixon. And that is, is that, still, right? that is, it's, it's still, it's, it's the, it's the episode I am still most proud of. Right. And, I, and I'll send you a link to it because if you're interested okay. in it, because it's, it was when, when we finished, and all I will say is that when we finished up the episode, he told me that nobody had ever asked him questions like that before, yeah. because yeah, I, had, well. I had seen plenty of interviews about yeah. other stuff that I, I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into that. Um, you know, again, I had John Perry on. I had uh, yeah. uh, I had Donald McDonald on last year. Did you? Uh, uh, I did. You see, know, all, those, all, those players, like, all those players you mentioned, I know well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Frank Davis, who was a premiership player with Melbourne. Yes, a lovely yeah. bloke. Yeah, his his son lives here in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Here oh, in, does he? Here in the States, yeah. Yep. Oh, yep. Gee. I well, saw him just recently at a place. Yeah, an unbelievable friend. Yeah, very successful, uh, very, a very interesting person, too, mm -hmm. Frank Davis. Yeah, oh, it, it, every, yeah. Everyone that I've had the chance to talk to has been absolutely delightful. 
Yeah, you yeah, mentioned about uh, questions. Um, you actually touched on it, but uh, I know I did a, uh, there was a young fellow, uh, I won't go into it, got his name Simon Remington from my side, Redan in Ballarat. And one of the, it's called My Redan Story in this particular case. In fact, if you Googled My Redan Story, in fact, yeah, you might, yeah, yeah, when you want to Google uh, My Redan Story and my name, and it will come up for you, right? My Redan Story, R E D A N story very cheaply but one of the questions he asked and I, he gave me time of course it wasn't a, a an interview uh, like the data but that's why it was a pretty good question of yours uh, asking and i couldn't come up with the answer um give some more thought but one of them was and i'd never been asked before and he and i we touched on it and his question was well barry uh, this well not barry but it was in writing uh, who did you get uh, can you name the people that you got to share the field with to share the so I didn't play on them, I didn't play with them naturally because I said, and I thought, gee, I've never been asked that before. So I did a bit of research and I was proud to come up with the fact between in nineteen more so nineteen sixty to sixty four, and other players would be able to name a lot more. So I went through the records and I found that I was able to say, well, here's eight people that I sh that I'm very proud to have shared the field with, and the reason why I yeah. mentioned the eight people is that they're all been main legends, L-E-G-E-N-D-S, of the Australian Football League. So they not only have been inducted into the Australian Football League's Hall of Fame, they've been elevated right, to right. the Elated status, status of legend. Yes. And there, that's there's only so many of them. I think it's 27 uh, in the history of it. And there's only one legend gets appointed for every inductee, mm -hmm. X number of inductees, it might be 20. And, and I thought, aren't I... Lucky's probably, aren't I, for, and I'm going to be part, I'll mention their names when I go to Ballarat, aren't can I, I lucky, aren't I fortunate to be to have shared the field with those players? And, of course, they mentioned, uh, they, they, they included Ted Witten, Ron Morassi, Daryl Bordock, Bob Skilton, John Nichols, just to mention five of them off the top of my head, and I got to know all of them quite well. Uh Graham Farmer and Ian Stewart were two of the other ones. Graham Farmer, Graham Farmer, oh, you've already done it. Graham Farmer, Ian Stewart, and another one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and and I now probably uh, Graham would have been the one that uh, I certainly shared a fear with him, and I got to talk to him, etc. Um, chances are, in his later life, if you said if you heard of the name Barry, Chip, he might not have remembered it. But the other ones, gee, I could mm -hmm. write a little chapter about each of them because, uh, and I did a uh, year and year and, and Ian Stewart, if you ever. Googled his interview with uh, with Mike Sheehan. It's a very, yeah, as a, a person that's in your role, uh, if you want to Google oh, uh, want to, Mike Sheehan's yeah, from, interview from, with from Open Mike. Yes, from Open Mike. Yep. I yep. thought it was one of his um, Ian Stewart. I thought it was one of one of Mike Sheehan's best interviews. Mm -hmm. It was okay. because of the homework, because of the research he did, and the questions that he asked. And what came out of it was not only was uh, was Ian um, very forthright, that's not the right word, but that'll do, um, and very knowledgeable and well-spoken, uh, oh, it was just an excellent interview, a, an excellent interview. Okay. Thank you for your time. And, thank uh, you very much, you know, sir. And again, Barry, I cannot thank you enough, sir, for uh, taking a couple of hours out of your morning to sit down and chat a couple of weeks ago. This was absolutely delightful. Uh, a lot of laughs. And, and, I, and I, I, although we've not met in person, I, I can honestly say, sir, I believe you are an extraordinarily decent man. And uh, I hope someday to get the opportunity to shake hands with you, sir. Um, because you seem like a, a, just a true gentleman, and I hope that that's uh, able to happen. So, folks, again, remember you can find everything related to the podcast over at my website, ayankonthefooty.com. You can find links to all my socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn as well. Again, if you've got an idea for a guest from the podcast, shoot me a note. Get on the emailing list so when a new episode comes out, it is in your email as soon as it is available. And uh, if you want to leave a review, that would be fantastic as well. And folks, look out for one another. Make sure everybody is, uh, is doing well. Let them know you care. Tell them you love them. Reach out. Go out and get a coffee. Bring them a coffee. Bring them a pie. I'd love to have a, a meat pie. I've never had one yet. Hopefully someday, though. 
And uh, folks, like I said, just take care of each other. And uh, I'll be sitting down Wednesday with Mick Aussie to go through the uh, the tips for the first round of finals this week. The four games there, we've got several things to be talking about there as well. The first week of the AFLW, pretty exciting week. Uh, I got to watch, I think, four of the games so far. But ladies and gentlemen, as always, may your dribble kick never hit that post. I will catch you later. And this has been episode 197 of a Yank on the Footy. Don't forget that you can reach me at yank underscore on or by email at a yank on the footy gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at a yank on the footy or yank on the footy podcast. Again, thanks for listening. I do hope you'll give the episode a share. Hope you'll consider leaving a review if you like the show. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Craig Wessels. Goodbye. And Barry, thanks again, sir. <laughs>